When I was uh, in India, uh, in central India, there was a terrible drought. Mm, it was in 1970, I'm not so good at numbers, 75 fish. And uh, mm, it was really bad. The water table had sunken so much that there was not a single well which gave water any longer. It was a desperate situation. People tried to cut uh, plants to get some water. Uh, I saw one child drinking the urine of a dog. <laughs> it was desperate. Mm, at that time, my spur to master was approached by the government Mm, in Hyderabad, uh, if he could mobilize a lot of funds which could go there. But he said, money won't create water. Uh, there is, however, something that will create water or bring water, this yagya uh, or sacrifice. And he has told us that you please go there and you do the great Nam Yagya, the uh, big sacrifice of chanting the holy name. And uh, we did it. We went village to village. And I remember the first week uh, the drought continued. Uh, we had already <laughs> almost exhausted all the water which we had brought. But then, after seven days or so, rain started pouring down. And I remember the village where we were. People started to run out. They first brought containers with them to catch the water. But the containers were quickly filled. And they understood, well, it's, uh, so much water is coming soon. Our wells will again give uh, water because the water table is rising. And uh, from that day on, I became convinced that by doing um, kirtan, singing the holy names with others, uh, a wave of auspiciousness uh, comes. And therefore, I very much appreciate this effort of singing together, really making a net together uh, so that mm, the mm, victims of the present or current epidem or pandem pandemic, it's called, mm, are, uh, are helped both in uh, financial ways, but uh, maybe mm, more important even in spiritual ways. Mm. You know, when a room in your house is on fire, you cannot ignore it. <laughs> you can't say, this doesn't concern me. Uh, you have to do all efforts that are possible for you in order to extinguish the fire there. So when one part of humanity uh, experiences suffering, uh, it is very unspiritual if you turn your back and uh, say, this doesn't concern me. The highest value for a spiritual person in relationship to this world is compassion in relationship to himself uh, and in relationship to the spiritual nature. There are other things, but in relationship to this world, a spiritual person uh, should uh, have compassion. Uh, compassion grows out of a very real fe feeling where you can feel the suffering of another. It's called empathy. You feel like them. And I would like to make a little exercise which I saw yesterday on another program 
on, on helping India, um, which I found so real um, uh, that I would like to repeat this exercise with all of you. Uh, it was Deepak Chopra who wanted to show everyone who was on that program what this particular, particular illness, uh, COVID-19, what it feels like when you have it. Because from there, when you feel like this, you can be really compassionate. And what he uh, uh, shared with us is an exercise based on an experience which I also had. He had also gotten COVID when I was at a massive spiritual um, event and I, uh, there were a few uh, participants who really had the disease and I got it also. And you know how it feels? You feel you can't breathe. And that creates a certain panic. So I would like all of us now to take a deep breath in and then hold the breath. Uh, let us do this. Uh, deep inhale and hold. I think at this moment it's still quite comfortable for all of you. But continue to hold, just to feel what it means that you can't breathe. I think by now you can already feel, oops, it's slightly uncomfortable. By the way, no one should kill themselves on the call. <laughs> if you need to now inhale and, uh, and exhale, do this. No? But if you do this, you will actually be able to emphasize with the victims of this illness. Mm. I remember it. It is really discomforting. And I only had a mild brush. I didn't need an oxygen filter. But even in the, ni in the night, I could feel, oh, this could be uh, the end in this body. Radhika asked me to share some of the, uh, let us say, amazing qualities of chanting uh, kirtan, kirtan together. Well, if you chant the divine sound vibration, uh, as it is there in the various mantras, at that time, you have a very real contact with the spiritual energy. It uh, influences you almost as if you touch a live wire. <laughs> um, the particular effort, effect here is if you absorb yourself in chanting, uh, uh, that you become relieved of your burden, your karmic burden. And uh, instead of your karmic burden, uh, your feelings of limitation, illnesses, anxieties, etc., instead of all this comes a very real experience of the spiritual nature. However, uh, in order for this to happen, it's really important that we absorb our consciousness in it. So we will start now to sing. Uh, I see time is also there. <laughs> I, I would love to talk more <laughs> about the amazing qualities of chanting, but uh, better than talking about chanting is chanting itself. So let's, uh, let's do this. Mm -hmm. We will start with a very powerful 
monosyllable mantra. I will chant one time for you. Krishna, 
Krishna, 
Krishna, Krishna, Krishna, Hare, Hare, Hare Rama. Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Oh, oh, oh. 
Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama.
Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Kirtan like this, like you have done already for all these hours, we enter into a sacred space. There is a temple in Vrindavan in India where they have a habit. When they come out of the sacred space, the temple, they walk through the main gate and then sit down next to the stairs which lead up into the temple. They just sit for a while and let the experience of visiting that holy temple sink in a little bit and then they chant the Ram Mantra with which we started this kirtan to so to say seal the experience almost as if you have filled nectar into a bottle and then you want to close it you want to seal it This mantra is known, it's to all of you, it's Ram. Let us please chant all together three times. Very, very grateful to have participated in this. I want to sincerely congratulate uh, Radhika and the team who put all this together. I think it will go a very, very long way. And I thank all of you who are participating, both as uh, the Kirtan leaders and those who sing. There's actually no difference. <laughs> uh, it is a, a come and go, or let us say give and take, so we are all connected. Thank you very much, and over to you, Radhika. <laughs> 